So Zach, you took the words right out of my mouth. So I guess I don't have to preach much today. That was just fantastic. And also the background and everything goes along with it. Thank you so much. You know, I was on my way here this morning. <clears throat> the sun was rising and I was going east on 131st Street. And uh, I was passing Lake Tampere. And the water was absolutely still. It was like a mirror. And there was one person in a fishing boat in the middle of Lake Tampere. <clears throat> and I thought of Jesus <clears throat> and his disciples who were fishermen. And I thought how when Jesus chose his disciples, he said, from now on, instead of catching fish, you'll be catching people. And I just wanted to capture that moment, so I kind of pulled over to the side. And in the stillness of the moment, I was thinking it was hard to believe that there's a virus that's been attacking our country. It was hard to believe, looking over the peaceful Lake Tampere and one person in a fishing boat, that there was any injustice or violence. And I was thinking, why does it have to be so hard for us to accept each other? How could the color of somebody's skin, how could the religion we are in, how could those things possibly divide us? Because that's not the way God wants it to be. So I kind of looked up toward the heaven and I said, Maddie Stepanek, we need you to come back for a little bit. You've been gone way too long. You were only 13 years old when you left us, but somehow your smile your wire-rimmed glasses, your wheelchair, your soft voice, your acceptance of humanity, your acceptance of diversity. We just need that. Because somehow, some way to me over the years, he symbolized what is good and rich about the human spirit that should bring us together. And so I walk into the church this morning and I'm just thinking about lots of stuff and what to say and I'm thinking, what can anybody say that's going to make a difference in the light of what's going on? And I open the door, <laughs> and there's two things on that little stand outside the door of my office. One is a pack of blackjack gum. And I'm trying to think, I, I don't see that. Where did it come from? I have an idea, and I know I've told this story before, but way back in the day when my grandparents would come to my house. My grandfather was a cute, short, little bald guy, and they lived in Mount Greenwood, and he didn't really say much, but uh, whenever they left, I would get up the next morning, and in my lunchbox or my sock drawer would be a pack of blackjack gum, and it was his quiet, Swedish way of saying, Don, I love you, and I'll always be with you. It was like he was trying to plant a little seed of goodness, and I've never, ever forgotten it. And then I saw this box. It's joy cups. They're like ice cream cone cups. And I, I thought of the word joy, and I kind of wonder who's bringing this stuff around, but somehow over the last two or three months, at least for me, the word joy has taken on new meaning, and I've gotten lots of emails and little articles and little things from you that talk about what joy really means. Because it's easy to lose the joy. It's easy not to feel joyful inside. Anyway, I uh, got a thing in the mail, a piece of art from one of you. And you grew up here. And I called you to thank you for it, and on the back of the piece of art was a little letter from the artist saying that sharing stuff like this brings me joy. And then uh, Eileen asked me, he said, Don, I, I was born at your church, just about. I was raised there. You'd done everything for my family. I said, well, how did you start using the word joy? Who was it? And I said, Eileen, it was your dad. What do you mean? Well, 46 some years ago, I came here to do what they called back then a trial sermon. You know, the bishop would say, this is a church I'd like you to consider, and if you're willing, we want you to go and preach a sermon and the people can see what you're like. And I remember coming here all those years ago, and I was so nervous, and the church was just charter hall, no carpeting, just some metal folding chairs. 
And after the service was over, your family invited me to your house. And you were just a baby, you don't remember that. But I was looking around the house and I, I saw a postcard on the, the counter in your kitchen. And it was obviously a letter that I think your dad probably wrote to the congregation saying, on this particular Sunday, this guy's gonna come and do a trial sermon. We hope you can be at worship. And he signed it, Joy Mark. And I thought to myself, that's it? Yeah, it's different than love or sincerely or truly yours. So when I got here, a few months later, I started writing letters and I always used the word joy. And it was about 15 years ago, I went to an old dollar store at 119th in Kedzie and I still was doing children's sermons, but no gifts. And I saw on the shelf all kinds of bottles of Joy dishwasher detergent. And I bought about 25 or 30 of them. And I used them in my children's sermon and gave them to the kids as they left. And they said, hey, uh, Pastor Don, are you going to start giving us stuff every Sunday? And I went, well, it's cost us a lot of money over the years. But it's been worth it. The word joy. Joy is not about being happy or sad. Because I have happy days, and you have happy days, and I have sad days, and you have sad days, and it's okay to be happy and sad. But joy goes deeper than that. Joy is about hope. Joy is about strength in the midst of weakness. It's about surviving in times of struggle. It's about light in the middle of darkness. Joy is about finding purpose and meaning even in those times when you begin to doubt yourself. Well, speaking of joy and the passage of time, there's a, a young lady, well, not as young anymore. Uh, she was in one of my very first confirmation classes. And a lot of those kids now are well into their 50s and some are pushing 60. And Holly is on Facebook quite a bit. And she's pretty honest about her journey. And I saw a Facebook message from her today, not just to me, but it was to a lot of her friends and family. I remember when Holly was young, uh, she battled diabetes as a child, and she did it with a lot of courage and a lot of grace when it wasn't easy. And I remember her father died at a young age, and I did his funeral, and I remember Holly's wedding. And I remember baptizing her daughter, and it wasn't too long ago that her mom passed away. And Holly is uh, gonna need a kidney transplant and she just recently found out that she also may have to have surgery on some arteries in her heart that are blocked. And I was thinking, yes, she needs a kidney. And yes, she may need surgery. And we can't do that. But maybe we can, in prayer, in silence, bring some joy to her journey. Because joy is about being connected. And joy is about giving someone else courage when they may not think they can do it by themselves. And so today, on this day, June 14th on Flag Day, you may not know her, but life is not about strangers, at least not here at All Saints. Life is about the spirit that brings us together from wherever you are and whoever you are. So today, let's pray for peace. And let's pray about coming back together. And let's pray for justice and understanding. Let's also pray for Holly. And praying for Holly will bring her joy, and it'll bring us joy too. Amen. Let us continue with the Creed on page 105.